Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amber and this week I have something a little bit different we're going to do because I'm taking the week off. But I'm also going to go ahead and give you a video of my fall favorites, which are actually not necessarily my fall favorites. It's the ones that you've told me in the recent videos that you loved and were your favorites. And so if you happen to be um, newly to my channel, then these might inspire you as favorites of my subscribers here on my channel. So maybe one of these will be your favorite. So there are four projects from different videos that we have here on the channel. You can go watch all of them. Um, let me playlist. Also timestamp them below as well and link you to those videos also. So that way you guys got some inspiration this week. Okay. So my husband's birthday is this week. And so we are celebrating actually today, his birthday, as you're watching this, it's actually, you know, today's his birthday. It's September 3rd. So, um, I just wanted to give you guys some inspiration again, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, turn on the bell and give me a thumbs up. Let me know which one of these is your favorite of the favorites. And let's go ahead and get started with this week's video. I'll be back next Friday with a brand new one for you guys and, um, enjoy your weekend. <laughs> Hey, let's get started with the first project. So we're going to be using a piece of cardboard, friends. <laughs> Do not underestimate what you can do with a piece of cardboard. So it's just a square piece of cardboard. I got it from an Amazon box, saved it, and knew I was going to do something fun with it. And I'm just putting white chalk paint over it, just a like a dry brush coat. It's not like full coverage. I want it to look kind of distressed. And then I'm using a stencil. The name of the stencil is Plaid from a maker studio. I am an ambassador for them. So if you use my link, um, I do earn a commission, but it costs you nothing more. That link will be in the description below. They have a lot of fun things. This video is not sponsored by them, by the way. I just wanted to let you know what I'm using. And so I just applied black chalk paste all over the entire stencil and then pulled it off and then dried it. And then I'm taking another piece of cardboard and I just painted it white with white chalk paint and I covered it more solid than I did the background. And then I'm just using this stencil from a maker studio. We're going to use, we're going to use this stencil, but we're going to replace that acorn with a pumpkin. And so I'm just using the same black chalk paint. Again, we're doing black and white decor in this video. So I thought you guys would really like this one. And then once this is uh, applied, pull it off while it's wet. Uh, it's they're really easy to clean. In fact, I clean these stencils the whole next day and then you're going to dry it and then you're going to apply the next stencil and it's really fun that it's interchangeable. So you could do this for, you know, not just with the stencil, but you could put whatever you wanted to as the O um, for, you know, year round use. But I am applying a pumpkin with some orange chalk paste that they have. I don't know exactly the colors I use, but um, we'll put it in the link below or over on the blog. And then I'm cutting this to fit where I want it to go on this board. So I'm going to frame this board out with Jenga blocks. And so I wanted this cardboard to be removable that we can change it out. And so I thought this would be really cool to make like a placard and, and I just framed it with, um, Dollar Tree jute twine and just hot glued it with my hot glue gun. But what I wanted to, you to know is that this can be changed out year round. So this one is full. But if you make a bunch of cardboard pieces that are about that size and use the Dollar Tree magnets, you can interchange it. And you'll see that as we go. So I'm just gluing four, four sets of four, four sets of four Jenga blocks together. And that's what we're going to make our frame with. And so once that was done, I kind of laid it on top, measured it, and then I cut off the excess uh, cardboard that was hanging over a little bit. And then I just hot glued my Jenga blocks right to the cardboard. It doesn't even look like cardboard anymore, does it? Like you can tell me in the comments what you think about this project. In fact, I said all of these are my favorite and I think that you guys are going to love all of these too. So I'm just using the magnets from Dollar Tree and they're stacked together and then I'm gluing it to the back of this little sign and then we're going to glue the magnet to the cardboard. So that way we know exactly where they're going to stick and it'll be perfect. And so I am going to make a bow. I mean, wh why not? Everything should have a bow in life, I swear. But anyways, if you don't want to do the bow, you certainly don't have to. You can make your sign a little bit smaller, but I wanted a bow and we're putting the bow on a magnet as well. So you can change it out. Now I'm taking Rafi and just balling it up and just as you see, I'm just folding it over and over and over and making it into a ball. That way I can just pinch it and lay it on top. 
So I took the fabric that I got from Hobby Lobby. It's just ticking fabric. I got a yard of it and I always get it when it's like 30% off. And instead of using ribbon, we're just using fabric because I thought that this print of the ticking fabric was perfect. And then I'm going to apply the magnets to the back, let them stick, and then I'm gonna do the same thing with the bow. We're gonna glue on the magnet to the bow and we're gonna stick it on there. And then I did hang a, put a jute hanger on the back of it, but you guys, it's completely interchangeable. So fun with cardboard. I, I've got to know what you think about this one. Seriously, <laughs> I, I, I'm in love. I wanna make a bunch of them. I think I make great gifts too. Like think about that for Christmas. So that is our first project and we're gonna go ahead and get into the next one. Okay, project number two, or this project is what I call like a chippy book page pumpkin. So I've been working on some chippy projects for you guys. Uh, I really wanna do a, a series of chippy projects. Um, if you hear thunder, it's raining here, so it might be thundering in the background, but I'm just taking a Dollar Tree canvas and I'm taking it apart and we're going to use it as kind of like our frame. We are going to create a chippy finish on the background. Some of these canvases can just be really difficult. Um, normally I use paint sticks and they usually have the handle on them. And so I found these, um, paint sticks without a handle on Amazon. I'll also have those linked on the blog. So if you want to check the description box below, all these projects are linked off. And so I just found that you get more use out of these because they don't have a handle. And even though I'm cutting these pieces off of there, I can reuse them and they won't have that little notch in them. So I did get these on Amazon. Typically I get my paint sticks at Home Depot or Lowe's. And then I'm just going to use these giant craft sticks from Walmart to create, like to secure them together on the back to create our foundation, like the back of our project. So it's, we're also going to be adding some paint. We're going to be putting some Vaseline on here. I really love creating the chippy look. It's something I've always absolutely loved to do. In fact, I just love creating faux finishes. I, I guess it just comes from my furniture painting days, but uh, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take some burnt umber. We're going to add in some water. We're gonna dilute this down and we're going to stain our wood. Now you can use regular wood stain if you want to. Y'all, I just feel like as a crafter and a, you know making ho affordable home decor, if, I, if you want to use stain, you certainly can, but you're going to achieve a very similar look um, if it's all about the color, certainly use some wood stain. I love the burnt wood, like the dark, like almost like, um, I don't even know what it's like. Um, it's like a mix of driftwood and like just a dark kind of Jacobian color. So I love the, I love the way that the, the wood stains with the paint. And then I'm taking Vaseline and I'm just kind of putting it on across this board wherever I want the paint to repel. Now the important part to this is that you want to coat the entire board really thick with paint and when you want to dry it and then you're going to drag your scraper across and as it dries you're not going to completely dry it you want the under part of it to be a little bit wet so it kind of pulls that off and then it leaves behind um, this chippy look now i am using that bur the burlap from i think it's a roll that i got at, Ho at hobby lobby and i just took some wax paper and i kind of sketched out what i want my pumpkin to look like and I knew I needed it to fit inside here, inside this frame, and not be too oversized. Because I'm also, you know, going to add a stem and things like that to this. So I just took some wax paper and cut out like a template. I didn't want to draw on the burlap and make it super noticeable. So I just created a template, traced around it with a pencil, and then it wasn't really wanting to work, so I just taped down the thing and just cut around it. So we're going to make it look really organic anyway, so it's not really going to matter. We're going to tear the edges off, as you can see, of our burlap. And then I just took some book pages from out of a book from the Dollar Tree, and I cut them to fit the little panels of my pumpkin. And then I took that same brush from our staining and painting before and used what was excess on there in a baby wipe, and I just painted it onto the book page and it helped create this you know old weathered look don't oversaturate your paper just use a damp baby wipe and then I took some white paint and kind of aged it a little bit more now we are going to glue the frame onto our chippy board y'all the chippy is fantastic I love the chippy finish it's just I absolutely love it and then I found this stick out of my backyard and I thought okay we're going to do this we're going to put a real stick on here and so I just cut it with these cutters and I'm gluing on the burlap and it doesn't have to be perfect. If it's raised up in areas, 
for me, I think it just looks great. So you can get creative with all these ideas that I share right here on my channel. The point is to inspire you and show you what I dream up and then you to kind of put your own spin on it. So if these colors aren't for you and you want more of a traditional look, you can certainly do that. And then I'm just layering the book pages on top. And then I took the this leaf. It is not even a pumpkin leaf, but I just thought, hey, it's pretty close. So I just cut it down to fit what I imagined that a pumpkin leaf looked like, maybe. And then I glued on the stem. And of course, you know, we're going to have to add a bow onto this because it just makes sense. So we're going to add this bow on top of here. And I'm using some ribbons from the Dollar Tree. It's not going to be like overdone. It's just going to be kind of simple. And again, use what ribbon you like. I'm going with a neutral feel for this. And I feel like I'm not really a traditional like decor for fall type of person. I really want it to kind of incorporate into my, the colors that I use in my home. So that's kind of why I go with a lot of muted tones and neutrals even though it's seasonal. And I still think it turned out super cute. So this is what it looks like, y'all. That pumpkin, I just think, turned out adorable. Now, you can leave the Spanish moss off if you don't want to use it. I th just thought it was an, a cute little added touch. And then I'm just going to stack these popsicle sticks on the back and raise it up just a little bit or lower it so we can have a hanger. And this is what it looks like. Let me know what you think in the comments below. All right, project number three of the favorites is this one right here. I really thought you guys would have thought the bowl pumpkin would have been the favorite, but y'all, so many people are like loving this one. And so this is one of the fall favorites for 2021. And we're just using these paint sticks from the hardware store. You can get them pretty much in, anywhere. And these large giant popsicle sticks from Walmart. I like to, they're just called giant popsicle sticks. And we're just going to glue them to the backside of our paint stirs. And then we're going to stain these brown and we're also going to stain our Jenga blocks that we're going to assemble. So we're going to make it look kind of like a scroll. So it's going to go like a top uh, the Jenga blocks will go along the top and then along the bottom. So there won't be sides and then our pumpkins kind of kind of like nestle in the middle of that. So I'm just using water to spray this. Most everybody asks me like, what are you spraying? What are you spraying? It's water, you guys. I dilute the paint down with water and that is just burnt umber acrylic paint. Uh, sometimes it's just like... Don't want to use chalk paint. Don't want to use acrylic paint. It's totally like up to whatever you want to do. And then again, same thing. We're using white paint to cover this because I don't want the yellow in the pumpkin to show. And we want to keep our napkin that we're going to use a bright white where the white is. And we're using a blue and white napkin. This one right here, you guys. It's not fabric. It's a napkin. So um, you can use whatever napkin you like. I've always, I always say that. You could use sunflower. You can use whatever the heck you want to, okay? So we're just going to separate this napkin. Again, I've painted it with just acrylic paint. We're using a little bit of Mod Podge. And then we are just going to apply this napkin right over the Mod Podge areas, which is just the raised part of the pumpkin. And so if you wanted to do the whole thing, you can. But I just decided I wanted to just do the raised areas. And then you can use the iron trick with the Mod Podge. I really just like the Saran Wrap rolling pin dry it, sand it off <laughs> type of thing. So there's so many different things you can use even Elmer's glue if you want like the little glue sticks to apply it. It's, it's absolutely whatever your preference is. There are no rules. Then I just sand it down those Jenga blocks, kind of give them a distressed feel. And we're going to use a mop head. So, um, just get you a mop head. If you want to use that in this bow, I am using fabrics and we're just going to dress this bow up in layers. I really kind of want it to be kind of frillyish but messy and fun at the same time so I'm separating these mob strings into the little like I call them like curlies and we're just going to piece them into our bow it's just going to be really fun found this sunflower fabric also and this ticking fabric and I'm pretty sure I always say I always forget where I get all this stuff from because I just shop at so many different places for all the inspiration but um, just keep a lookout for sunflower fabric or you can use um, ribbon as well. And then I just tucked in some raffia in there. And we're just going to tie this off. And I do put a spot of glue when I can't get my twine to stay stuck. And then I just kind of hold it there until I can flip it over and tie my knot again with my twine for my bow. Then we're just going to add our jingle blocks to the top and bottom. I'm covering the stem of this with burlap ribbon. Looks kind of like ribbon. But uh, this came from Dollar Tree, I do believe. 
You can get some of that burlap stuff at Hobby Lobby as well. So anyways, I wanted some texture on the top of our pumpkin. And then we're just going to add on that bow. Now, I will tell you, you can leave your bow with less. Or you can make your bow with less raffia if you like. It's absolutely not a requirement to use it whatsoever. I kind of liked the lot of raffia and I just tucked in some greens we're gonna add a jute hanger to this and you guys I am in love with this as well I'm not surprised it was a favorite this week so I'd love to know what you think and then um we're gonna go on into our last favorite but here you go guys and enjoy the next one and this is our final project and I am also in love with this one. So I picked up this frame from the Hobby Lobby on clearance who passes up on the clearance, right? And I took some, what was that, kilt wax and I just waxed the entire frame. I didn't use paint. And then I am showing you how if you add a little bit of clear wax to your MDF, you can stain it in a way that almost looks like wood, like it's wood stained. So I was trying to match the finish on the frame. Now y'all, this is a bath mat and I loved the back of this mat and I loved that it was just part of the vision of like a boho type of feel for fall on the background of this frame. I just felt like it just went. And so run to your Dollar Tree, pick up a bunch of these mats because there's tons of things you can do with them. You can make pillows, you can cut them and do like I'm doing and layering them into like signs and stuff. It's totally up to you to use your own creativity. But I am going to glue this on and I'm just using a pencil to kind of score it to get the fit because, you know, on edges it likes to fray and become like uneven. And that way I was able to get the, a better fit and I had to kind of stretch it out when I did glue it down and make it where you couldn't really see the seams because I did undercut it just a smidge. But once you start getting everything on it, it actually turned out really cute. And I just kind of glued in sections. That way my glue did not dry in the process. And I also did not want it to dip down into where that moon was. And so I glued as I went, just stage by stage by stage. It was a larger surface and that way I was able to keep it tight and have more control and it didn't dip down into that spot. So if you happen to have this frame and you got it on sale like I did, Here's one way that you can use it. Now I am going to go in and make this super neutral. I thought this had a really high end look and looked really expensive. Like I envision like how can I create things that we can get like in Kirkland's or Hobby Lobby and make them ourselves and make them really cute that would even anyone guess that we made it ourselves or would they think that we bought it that way? So love the illusion of creating high end decor that we made ourselves for pennies basically. So I'm just hot gluing everything in layers because again, I'm not really that great at bows. And so just get the thing done, right? So I just start stacking stuff and I found those cute white leaves at Dollar Tree this fall and I'm just gluing them right to that mat. I've laid on the gather sign that we stained with the brown stain and I just think that it turned out so absolutely adorable actually better than I expected. But you guys, these were our projects this week. I hope you've enjoyed them. I would love to know what you think about each one of them. Again, consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to check out other videos over here to inspire you. And we will be back again with another video next week. Hot glue does amazing things, right friends? Look at how cute that is. I'm really impressed. <laughs> but thanks again for being here and I'll see you guys on the next one.